We will rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Rowe. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Present. Councilman Racy. Here. Councilman Porter. Here. Councilman Sanders. Present. Councilman Gabriel. Present. Councilman Webster. Here. You do have a quorum with all seven members present, Mayor. Okay. The first item on the agenda is a moment of silence for Owen McGill, who passed away. Um, for those of you who may not have known Owen, he was. Uh, a longtime friend to this city. He was a firefighter. He retired as a lieutenant. Um, I, I would go and talk to him and see him quite often since he lived just around the corner from me. And uh, the last two years have been that great for him. And uh, the good Lord chose to take him from us. And with that, if we would now bow our heads, please. Thank you. The next item is the administration of oath of office for Ryan Callahan as a firefighter. So if Ryan would like to come in, he's in the hallway with uh, his team, and then we'll uh, do this part. <laughs> You know you have to stay here forever. Okay, well, we'll have uh, your dad's here for sure, so we'll have him stand next to you, okay? So come just a little bit more over, okay? Yeah, so you're in the center. You in the center there. All right, okay. Okay, and then we'll have the chief. Uh, Deputy chief. Chief oh. Schneider. So we'll welcome you aboard. So we'll have you stand here. So shake your hand. All right. Okay. There you go. <laughs> right. And then your uh, team that's working with you and training. So Davis training you too. So come on up. Right. I'm so excited. There you go. <laughs> Who's manning the station? <laughs> Don't ask those questions. <laughs> we'll just say this is the safest building in Wayne right, right now. And everyone else, would you like to join in? All right. Congratulations. All right, squeeze <laughs> Might need to do two rows, maybe. There you go. This. Item one is the approval of the agenda. Move approval of the agenda. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Item 2 are the City Council Minutes. Item 2A are the regular meeting minutes of January 16th. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Any corrections, additions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Item 3 is presentations. Item 3A is a presentation by DTE with an update to the LED lighting project. Um, and if you'd like to come forward, Ray Zoya and Deborah Kane from DTE are going to do the presentation. And here is your and then I'll get it up on the screen. Okay. okay. So we'll be there. Which one to click? The center? Okay. Oh. Which one? Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Ray Zoya. I'm a manager with DT Energy's <coughs> Community Lighting Department. And with me is Deborah Kane. She's the account manager assigned and <coughs> responsible for the city of Wayne going on, what, eight, nine years now? Mm -hmm. okay. Ten, actually. Ten years. <laughs> Um, so what we want to do is we want to take a few minutes, I think we were, they were, we were here, what, over a year ago, uh, mm -hmm. to talk about the LED conversion project. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you were fortunate enough to receive a Michigan grant award to help cover your upfront costs mm -hmm. to do the conversion from mercury vapor to LED, uh, which is great. With that budgeted money that you received, you were able to do about 1,247 lights, uh, which is going to save the city about $135,000 a year. Um, we're here to admit the project didn't go as smoothly as we had wanted, um, but understand there were two things that happened here, two things on a parallel path. One, we had some issues within the actual project in converting the lights, and two, as a result of some of the work that was done on Michigan Avenue with the MDOT signalization project, it actually put a lot of stress on our underground wiring system, so I'll get into that in detail. First within the project, okay, so um, we thought the project was completed. Unfortunately, we had some breakdowns within our team. Um, we admit that. Uh, we in act in incorrectly repeated, uh, reported the project was complete by the project manager. Uh, it was not. We did have to go out and convert some additional lights and put some overtime in to actually get those lights converted and, and complete that part of the project. Also, uh, as you can see, we missed um, some by our contractor. Those have all been corrected. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the one that's the most disheartening to us is that 25 of the 417 retrofit kits, which means that the internal guts of the fixture were replaced. They failed. Uh, and it was quite a challenge with our manufacturer to get them replaced. It took some time. They did replace them. Uh, we thought they were all done. <coughs> Never did, <coughs> did a additional uh, night patrol this morning and tonight, and we found seven additional that are out. Mm -hmm. Contractors have already been notified. We're going to be out here in the morning to see if, in fact, are the kits. Uh, and if so, we're going to rush those kits to get those seven fixed. Um, so as part of the performance, we're doing night patrols. We're paying our contractors to do that work, um, and we're going to expedite these kits. Um, as part of the uh, root cause analysis of these fixtures, we found that there were quality control problems in the manufacturing. Um, so they have since taken action to correct that internally, and so hopefully in future projects we won't have that problem. But that's a requirement of DT. Give us a reason why they failed. So that was the first issue within the project, and as you hear, we still have seven to fix. The other problem is that during the signalization project on Michigan Avenue, all down Michigan Avenue, um, they created some pretty extensive damage to our wires. Uh, some was immediate, and some was, it's like an aging system. You nick it, you stretch it, you pull it. It fails over time. When does everything fail? It fails in the winter time. So um, we continue to fight this battle, uh, and we've got enough evidence and proof that we're actually going back to the state of Michigan for, to, to recover our costs associated with this and their their subcontractors but again we are still locating faults we have 25 out 35 on Michigan, 35 35 out on Michigan mm -hmm. Avenue that still need repair we've replaced over 400 <coughs> feet of cable so far I, I believe when we're all said and done we're probably going to replace twice this amount 
because um, there's stretches of four or five lights that go out. When we go in there, we'll remove the cable once we find the fault and put in all new cable. It is an aging system, so we're trying to replace it uh, as we can. To do a complete project would be just cost prohibitive at this time. So we're going to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, we do have to secure permits to do it because Michigan Avenue is a MDOT roadway. Probably. So you got to do Miss Dig, you got to secure permits. So there's a little time, but we're trying to do it as fast as we can. All right, and then finally, uh, during the initial scoping of the project, uh, we determined <coughs> with the city that there was a miscommunication between us and the city. That's okay. It happens. It was a big project, 1,247 lights. So there's 33 on Michigan Avenue that are still orange in color. They're high-pressure sodium. Uh, we've worked, you know, for a lot of your inconvenience. We're going to convert those lights uh, over to LED. We're going to we have to present you an agreement, but there will be no cost to the city, and we're going to get those lights changed up. And that's all we have, and if there's any questions, we can have to answer questions. Are there I any questions? One. I have one question, Mayor Rowe. Mm -hmm. Is uh, the additional lights that you are, are going to uh, replace, how many of those will be? 33. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Any other questions? from? Yes, Tom? Since... Um, since you had seven more failures on the retrofit <coughs> kits, are you do you foresee more in the future? How's that going to? It, it, it's it's hard to say, and I and I understand your question. Uh, mm -hmm. We do really ask for the city's help. We put a lot of pressure. We have, as a result of what happened in the city of Wayne, we have weekly calls with this manufacturer, mm -hmm. uh, and there's been other problems. We have a lot of concerns with this manufacturer right now, and we're looking at alternative suppliers as a result of it. So we'll, we'll try to expedite the replacements. Right now, since we know the root cause, we'll be able to turn these a lot quicker. Madam Mayor. All right. Yes, Councilman Sanders. So I was one of the <clears throat> biggest opponents to having DTE do this in the first place mm -hmm. because past experience, DTE always has a reason why a project fails. Our green light posts, and, and we're still dealing with that as far as the rusting out of that and it's always the manufacturer's issue it's all it's always gonna be the manufacturer's issue because DTE never owns the project the, 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 the product so to speak right but my question is this what happens when this continues to come up Wh at what point is the cost gonna be passed on the city because and what I said at the time is eventually somehow this cost is not gonna be a savings because this is exactly what's going to happen right now you're saying these retrofits are not going to be any or and the 38 lights on Michigan Avenue are not going to be any additional cost to the city that is why I wanted the original meeting the original presentation to be on um, video so we could have proof of what was guaranteed so was it any miscommunication I, I, I just don't I just don't trust DTE anymore you have a question? I mean, question? I'm just the, the a well. Here. No, I don't necessarily need a question. I just need to tell you that I'm not satisfied, and and I appreciate the fact that the the city managers worked diligently and hard, and 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 rightfully so. She's been taking a lot of heat sure. from residents and council alike, and I do appreciate that it's done. I'm just hoping that we're not going to have to pay any more additional costs down the road. You paid for the project. We'll continue to provide the service that you pay for on a monthly and annual basis. Thank you. And the city had no cost in this project. So the Thank project you. was funded by the state. DTE contributed well over $70,000 to the project. The city had no cost in this project. Right. I understand that. And they probably won't have any going forward. But you understand the cost. Mm -hmm. The cost still comes from taxpayers. Grants are not free. They come from taxpayers' money. Okay. Councilman Sanders, please. Mayor Mayor, I do have yes. a question. Yes. Um, with the, the kits and everything to protect the city, what kind of warranty comes with the kits moving forward? Well, the, the kits came with a five-year warranty mm -hmm. on them. And most of, the, fa of the, the 25 failures out of 417 that we replaced, they happened immediately. But we, uh, yeah, but understand mm -hmm. we're at risk on the warranty. Yeah. You know, if it fails beyond the warranty period, you pay for a service, we replace the fixture. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Any other Madam questions? Mayor. Yes. Um, so you said with the, these failures for these kits, it was a quality control issue. Um, what was the issue with the initial 25 <coughs> as compared to these seven? Is it the same issue? Is it something different? Uh, it was a few different issues. We don't have the report in front of us, but we did request a report. Um, they said that it was a wiring issue a wiring within issue. the retro kits. Right. And it, it was just such a minor thing to have such a high profile mm -hmm. effect on this whole project. But nevertheless, 25 uh, fixtures out out of 417, yes. And we did, you know, take the heat on that. And we have since uh, got to the root cause. The manufacturer even sent additional kits when the first 25 went out. And now we're looking at another seven. And I think after I drove the whole city mm -hmm. this morning, last week, I think finally get these seven done and, and we'll, we'll be in good shape. And we'll be requesting some additional kits too mm -hmm. because if they well, can continue to fail, we want to, to maintain some inventory here so that if they continue to fail, we have replacements. Thank you. Okay, okay I have a, a follow-up mm -hmm. question. This manufacturer that you utilized, are you going to continue to utilize them for these kits? To be determined. Anyone else? I have one more question. Wait, uh, Council, is, Councilman Racing. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, guys, for being here tonight. Um, I have a few questions. I've, I've been meeting with you guys for probably for five years, being a liaison with the Council, and so we've had many meetings. Um, a few things I was wondering about, and I, I was, you, you saw me last night, I was driving through the city last night in the snowstorm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I'm excited about the $135,000 savings. That's exactly what we, this was all about, was trying to save money for the community and our, t and our residents. Um, when we met the last time, we talked about Sims Avenue and fixing, there was a, just a few <coughs> lights on there. I remember. The proposal with me tonight. Okay, so, you, so you'll give that something about that. And then we also talked about you were going to do the remainder of the green lights this, this summer that we were. The post paint. Yes. Well, that's to be determined. We're doing. We're spending well over twenty thousand dollars to convert that extra circuit, just to you know that we haven't determined where we're going to be painting this summer, and so that's to be determined if we're going to be doing any painting. It'll be on the list, but it's on the list. But okay. We'll see. We, well, haven't, we haven't committed to anything. We're we develop. We're developing the twenty eighteen post painting, and uh, we'll decide after once it's. We get budget. That's more or less it. We yeah. don't even know if we have budget for it yet. Right. I hope we're at the top of the list because I remember talking to you probably three years ago, Ray, um, at a, up at the ABC building, and you promised me that year that we were going to have those painted. <laughs> like a few years. And so, so well, I, we did paint yeah, I, and, and we're getting we're getting there, but we were going to get them all. So I just I, I hope we can finish the remainder because especially in the downtown area, there still are posts that weren't weren't done and and we talked about it at the last meeting so I, I would really appreciate to see that those things cleaned up and uh, because we do pay the maintenance fee to make sure that those posts are, are are looking looking right and they're they're way off in color and rust and stuff that just doesn't um, look good for our, our downtown and our community so okay. thanks okay um, you might want to also do a drive-through down Wayne Road to our neighbor to the north and Westland uh, the past three nights, all the lights on the eastbound side of Wayne Road from Glenwood, as far down as Ford Road, are out. I didn't notice them coming. I didn't in. either. I was down that I way. I came Palmer tonight. to Wayne, and mm -hmm. I didn't notice them. Typically, they were on the east side of the road. They, they could have been repaired already too, but I'll okay. Look. Yeah, east yeah. side of Wayne Road. Yeah. North okay. of Green Glenwood. North of Glenwood, all the way almost to Ford Road. I'll check. They Maybe may I didn't go far enough. Okay. I thank came, you. No, I came down Palmer. Palmer north mm -hmm. of Glenwood. So. I didn't yeah. see any out. Yeah. Down but please fix ours first. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just being neighborly. Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time, and um, you'll hear from us. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Do we get questions on this? What, uh, yes, if, uh, I'll allow a few questions. <coughs> The lighting okay. infrastructure? Or is the city of Wayne build for our lighting on the outside? Is that an on demand? No, it's built at a flat rate. Flat rate? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Do we get 
credit for on the flat rate, the lights are not working. Yes, the so city is poor. Yes. are working, you have it balanced out so that we get credit city on that. City see a credit for all of the lights <laughs> that have been out. Uh, we mm -hmm. want to talk about it. There's about a $10,000 credit. The city for needs to yeah. answer anything to do with financial stuff. Yeah. But okay. yeah. Okay, we reduced the charge on that. The infrastructure is yours. So once we start doing that, who recovers the cost? Of, who recovers the savings cost after the fact? We get all of that. I mean, I don't know how we pay our bill. We pay a bill at a flat rate for the entire city for mm -hmm. all of it. Yes. So it's not an on-demand at all. No. As the cost of that bill reflected in the $135,000 annually for the reduction, <coughs> that's where we're getting our reduction. Mm -hmm. Correct. And on top of that, we get credit for any lights that are not working. Any light, energy only for any light that's out over two weeks. Over we two still. Weeks. DTE well, still DTE still pays taxes on all on the street light asset. We still incur any liability. So we do credit for energy only if a light is out more than two weeks. It's all how in the we, rate how book. Do, how do we rate that? How do we know that? How do you know that? Well, we expect the lights to be reported to us when they're okay. out and from that day the clock starts to tick. So if we report a light number four 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 seven three mm -hmm. six five yes. that fourteen digit number is on the <laughs> pole and say that light's out, you start the clock yes. starts right then. And you got two weeks to yeah. repair. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've been averaging three to five days on repairs. When and when our cable is estimate about how much money we have already recuperated on our bill for all the lights that were out on Michigan Avenue. Well, that's that's what we're talking about, and ahead. that's what you can ask them. And, uh, and we recoup that, Lisa. Do we get any money back on that? The credit will will be on the bill that. The city will receive for the month of January. They may not have received it yet. I think the bills mm -hmm. go out around the 1st or the 15th. I'm not sure which cycle they're on, but it was on the bill. So the city may not have seen it <coughs> if they haven't seen the bill yet. And the residents can help too. They can go onto our website and report an outage as well. This doesn't have to be done by the city. It can be done by you folks as well. And the credibility of that goes where? It's still, it's, a, it's an automated system, so as soon as you report it, the clock starts ticking. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else? No? Okay. Thank you for coming. Okay, hey, item four. <laughs> Our public hearings. Item 4A is a public hearing <coughs> to consider the transfer of proposed uses of the city's fiscal year 1718 community development block grant program funds of $90,062.55 from code enforcement to $50,000 in demolition and then the remainder $40,062.55 <coughs> in code enforcement. Lori. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, this is a public hearing. I'll give a brief explanation for those who may not have heard the last meeting, what we're doing here. Um, because we did not have uh, demolition allocated in our 2017-2018 fiscal year budget through um, the Community Block Grant Program, uh, we are required to hold a public hearing. We're looking at transferring money out of code enforcement into demolition, reason being um, as you may know, as you all know, uh, we ran into some issues with the removal of the building on Michigan Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of 2016, uh, if we didn't spend all the money that was allocated for that year, uh, that money was reverted back to the county. We still have costs that are owed on this project, so in order for the city to not have to pay anything out of the general fund, we're going to transfer this money into demolition so we make sure that we restore that property back to the way it, it needs to be. So um, there's not any questions, or I'll stand aside until. <clears throat> we'll question? open the public hearing. Is there any question at all from the audience Madam Mayor. regarding this? No? Okay. We'll close the public hearing, open it up to the board. Um, if we don't, now, just just be sure, because I agree with this, but we don't have to use the money in the demolition fund, just that it's in the fund, correct? Well, no, the idea would be to use by, it. I know, but by the so, end of the year. Kind so of. if it's getting close, it's a good question. If it's getting close and say I have 20000 left, I would move that into um, 
maybe senior services or I move it into another line item. So we did use the money. We're going to use it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's our goal to always use our CBDG money. Unfortunately, last year we didn't have an option. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. This is the, we'll have another public hearing. Do we need two on this one or oh. just the one? Uh, this, there's only one is just required the, for the transfer. Oh, for the, the transfer. Is the second. second. Okay. And uh, motion to approve the transfer, please. Motion to approve the transfer. For been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Mayor Pro Tem, to approve the transfer. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Right. Mm -hmm. Item 4B. This is a public hearing to consider the proposed uses for the city's fiscal year 1819 community development block grant program funds. And this is the second required hearing for this um, issue. All right. But for those of you that are in the audience, uh, tonight we are discussing the funds that are allocated for the 1819 fiscal year. Uh, this is community development block grant money, which is utilized in, low, utilized in low to moderate area and income areas in our city. Uh, 1819, we're looking at putting in 25,000 in code enforcement, uh, 13,500 for senior services, uh, $20,000 into demolition. Uh, $10,000 into administration and new this year uh, trying to bring back a program that was done in the city years ago um, housing rehab uh, we'll be meeting with Wayne Metro tomorrow to talk to them to decide what that program <coughs> would look like it's the administration's goal that this money would be utilized to assist individuals that may need a new furnace or a new water heater or a new roof uh, once those parameters are defined we will share that information with all of you as well as the public so those individuals that are in the low to moderate income areas and qualify can receive these services okay. okay we will open the public hearing are there any questions yes could you please come forward Osborne's the name same same street can you explain what the uh, development is that uh, this block grant is going to afford, what you're going to do? Quick notes. She says it's some information about giving something 12000 to administration. Um, and also we have the word uh, demolition. Um, when we're developing something, demolition doesn't sound very tasteful to me. So up on the public hearing that you just had for the other one, Part A, transferring monies over uh, in this community development block grant went to, you were so quick to move on had an information about we were having trouble with this building on Michigan Avenue. And uh, so we'd like to take the money out of there to finish, hurry up and, and demol do some demolition out of that fund and, and take away from another fund. So I'd like some more uh, information about the word development means it's we have growth. We don't have growth when we have just tearing down buildings. We don't have any flat parking lots yet. But there's no development of cleaning uh, streets, uh, sewers, uh, making it look good. Uh, we hear from people, our, our green light poles, they're getting to look shoddy. And you don't go to Detroit and you put uh, plastic uh, uh, yellow wrappers around them and then the poles fall down and hit your car. So, I'd like to see some development. What makes it look good? And I, well, this is a public hearing. I'll make my statement as I did last time. You have this public hearing uh, on the agenda. Mm -hmm. The second page of your agenda always tells you you've got three minutes to talk. Mm -hmm. I believe that public hearings should commence prior to a regular standard meeting of the City Council of where it is open and it's not timed. A public hearing is a public hearing and it should have a, a, a 
wider array for people to ask questions or to monitor or for the people who are authorizing this to give a better explanation. And in regards to where she would like to place some of this money, um, please give me uh, eight seconds more, sir. Dear ma'am. Yes. Is the senior services are always going, they're going on the down. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Meals on Wheels, okay? This is I the, think it's a, the three a minutes development and eight thing. seconds now have been utilized. We'll let him go. Okay, continue. See what happens? I said continue. Thank you very much. That's what I asked for you. Uh, the senior services, Meals on Wheels program, mm -hmm. those people deliver meals to honestly needing people. Mm -hmm. And our people that deliver those meals, it's nice that they do the great job, but we put them in the raggediest looking vehicles, wind up toys that we can give them, put a state seal on them, a city seal on them. Okay? It'd be nice if we could get some of our car dealers or dealerships go out and look for them. Let's put a nice car out there, Meals on Wheels, with a phone number, and it is from the city. That I call development. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. Is there anyone else? No? Okay. I'll close that portion. Anything from members of council? A motion, please. Motion to um, pass first reading. No, the second. Reading, this sorry. is the second reading. Second reading. I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, motion to pass second reading of public hearing to consider proposed use of city's FY 1819 uh, community development block grant. This is a, the second public right. hearing to close the public hearing. Right. right. And adopt the. Right. Okay. And that's yes. Thank you. He did correct his motion to okay, say thanks. second. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I apologize. All right. I'll remain support. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. No. It's been moved and supported by Councilman Sanders and Councilman Gabriel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 5 is our request. Item 5A is to declare February as Black History Month in the City of Wayne. Move, Move approval. Support. Okay. Uh, it's been moved by Councilman Gabriel, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Are there any questions? No. I do have a resolution prepared. Yes. Would you like me to read it? Please. Thank you. This is the City of Wayne resolution. Whereas the month of February is officially celebrated as Black History Month, which dates back to 1926 when Dr. Carter G. Woodson set aside a special period of time in February to recognize the heritage and achievements of black Americans. And whereas the history of black Americans is a story of extraordinary individuals whose achievements have set examples for citizens of all races. And whereas while the history of black Americans is also a story of countless nameless heroes brought to our shores who endured lives of bondage and oppression, the deprivation of civil rights, and the ravages of bigotry and racism, it is a history for which most of the chapters have yet to be written as black Americans continue to contribute to the American promise. Now, therefore, I, Susan M. Rowe, Mayor of the City of Wayne, on behalf of the City Council and the citizens of Wayne, do hereby proclaim February 2018 as Black History Month and urge all citizens of the City of Wayne to recognize the contributions that African Americans have made not only in the city, but in our country's history. Thank you. Thank you. If none of you have uh, not ever gone down to see the Charles Wright Museum downtown, that really is a very, very good museum to go and see to uh, look at the history of the um, Native uh, Black Americans who have come and lived here, what they did, um, how they came. and. Uh, it's very moving. It's a very beautiful museum, but it's very moving as well, the history and the story there. Where is it at? It's in Detroit on Woodward Avenue. Okay. City clerk. We need a vote. Item six, our ordinances and amendments. We need a vote. Oh, oh, we need a yes. vote. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, okay. Sorry. And all in favor of uh, declaring 
February is the Black History Month. Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Item 6, our ordinances and amendments. Item 6A is the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 2018-01. This is amendments to the 2010 Wayne Downtown Master Plan for the properties located at 35707 and 35751 Brush Street <coughs> from multiple family re residential to heavy industrial. Move approval, second reading, adoption of ordinance number 2018-01, amendments to the 2010 Wayne Downtown Master Plan um, for the addresses, uh, addresses listed below. Support. It's been moved and supported by Councilman Sanders and Councilman Gabriel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Item 6B is the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 2018-02. This is amendments to the City of Wayne zoning map for those same properties at 35707 and 35751 Brush Street from multiple family residential to heavy industrial I-2. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Racy, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next item is item seven, appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. Item 7A is to approve the reappointment of John Zeck to the Dangerous Buildings Appeal Board until February of 2021. Move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? motion carries item 7b is to approve the reappointment of nancy chasen to the wayne library board until february of 2023 move approval support it's been moved by councilman sanders supported by T councilman porter any discussion no? all in favor aye. aye opposed motion carries Item 8, our communications. Item 8A is a redevelopment ready communities baseline report. That was Received included in your file. packet. Okay. <coughs> item 9 is general items for consideration. Item 9A is to approve the 2018 poverty exemption guidelines. Okay, do we have anyone here from the... Yes, Jennifer Neiman is here from oh, WCA, okay. Wayne County Assessing. Okay. If you could just give us a brief overview. Welcome to Wayne. Thank you, Council. Uh, so the Michigan Compile Laws 2117U requires that the poverty exemption affidavit or the uh, asset test and guidelines be approved by the City Council annually. So what we're presenting is just the annual request to approve the guidelines in the asset level uh, for the 2018 tax season. The guidelines for the income are based off the federal guidelines as what is considered poverty. Um, and again, it, it's just a requirement that we annually present these to Council for their approval. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yes. Could you, um, could you um, through the chair, mm -hmm. um, could you explain to the residents what this means exactly to um, someone who is in poverty? That fits these guidelines. Yes. So, um, according again to the federal guidelines of the income levels, uh, for example, a one-member household is considered to be in poverty if their income is less than twelve thousand and sixty dollars for the entire year. Um, income is defined by the state of Michigan as, of course, any wages that you might receive, unemployment, um, even gifts that you receive from family members. Um, so, if somebody believes that they could qualify for that amount, then they can uh, request an application from our office. It's a form that's um, required to be filled out. They fill it out. There's documentation that's required, such as your income tax statements. If you don't file income tax statement, there's also a form to say such, an affidavit that you don't file. Um, we have a checklist so that the person knows exactly what it is that they are required to submit. Um, and then it's presented to the Board of Review. The Board of Review meets in March, July, and December. Uh, and at that time, they review the application and its entire 
property they review the documentation that's attached to it and if they feel that the um, person does qualify based on the approved guidelines that are established by City Council then the person can see a reduction in their tax obligation it is only for a one-year exemption um, it's it can be a complete exemption it can be a partial exemption or it could be denied based on the material that's provided in the um, information of the the applicant it does have to be owned and occupied by the applicant it's not for rental properties um, and it's not for commercial properties it's solely for the person's primary residence um, if they do not meet the guidelines as far as the federal guidelines as income or asset test we do allow for extenuating circumstances um, again that is required by the state of Michigan to allow for extenuating circumstances um, an example would be if somebody's income for 2017 was over the limit um, but they happen to have a, a medical issue at the end of the year that you know forced them to retire or quit their job or their medical bills are just completely outstanding it's taking out a, a chunk of their income those are extenuating circumstances that the Board of Review can consider if the person is truly over the income and asset testing Madam Mayor, one more question. Certainly. Um, and so from your personal knowledge, mm -hmm. um, or the tr uh, anyone else that might have the knowledge, um, how many people have been exempted because of poverty? Like well, it, very, it, it varies from year to year, to be honest. Um, because the, according to Michigan law, every property is taxable unless expressly exempt. So the exemption for proper poverty has to be strictly adhered to as far as the guidelines and things like that. Um, the state does audit these exemptions. Uh, it's, it's not an exemption that everyone will qualify for because as stated if it's a one-person household the federal income guideline is only twelve thousand um, dollars it may seem extremely low but again we are using what the federal guidelines are considered so it just it varies I and mean, we may have you know five applicants a year we may have 20 applicants a year it, it just from year to year it varies how many we actually receive and how many actually are granted and again it's all based on what they provide us um, we have to strictly adhere to the guidelines so there's no deviations unless the extenuating circumstances are well documented as to why they should be approved over the income guideline thank you okay. any other questions uh, wish of council move approval support been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Councilman Gabriel. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next uh, slide. Uh, one moment. Jennifer, you're here Tuesdays and Thursdays for assessing questions? Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, one before Thursday. Okay, and you could <laughs> assist people if they have any questions or anything at that Absolutely. time? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, Okay, thank you. The next item is item 9B. This is to approve membership dues to SEMCOG in the amount of $2,276 to be paid from the City Council memberships and dues budget. Madam Mayor, I'd like to table this item until um, which time that we start our new budget cycle um, in June? For, for July 1? Yeah, July 1. Have, have, have it in that July discussion? 4, sorry, yes. I support it. Are there any questions? No? All right, it's been moved to uh, table this item to include it in our 1819 uh, budget request. Uh, any other questions? Okay, supported by Councilman Gabriel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. I thought it was uh, Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item 9C is to approve lot split number 2018-01. This is for parcel number 013-01-0093-303 of Brush Street at Elizabeth. Okay. Move approval. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported by Councilman Sanders and Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Any discussion? Questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Next item is item 9D. This is to approve a resolution of, of intent to adopt an ordinance under the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act for the attestation for the three existing medical marijuana facilities to continue operation. 
I move approval. Support. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Councilman Porter. Are there any discussions or questions? Yes. yes. Um, are we at liberty to explain to the, obviously there's a great number of people here, um, what we're looking at and or, or why we're just doing this at this time? Yes, I will turn it over to the city attorney. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> so uh, state requirements in order for a provisioning center now under the new state law to continue operating uh, does require that any existing dispensaries uh, complete what's called a temporary attestation form uh, and turn that into the state with their uh, state application. The deadline for that form is February 15th. So that obviously that deadline is fast approaching. As everyone should know, we have approved uh, three locations here in the city to operate as a provisioning center already under our old ordinance. Uh, in order for us to sign, the city clerk to sign the attestation form, there is a requirement that we indicate that we have uh, an ordinance pending. So <clears throat> what I didn't want to see was the city sign an attestation form and then not later adopt an ordinance that would at least permit the three provisioning centers that we already have in our city. Um, so what we're doing with this resolution today, if the council chooses to, to approve it, <clears throat> is authorize the city clerk to sign the attestation form for the three provisioning centers that have been approved should they present said form to the city in a timely fashion um, so that they can continue on with their state operating license application. Um, it is not our obligation to provide these forms to the three dispensaries. It is absolutely their obligation to present it to the city and continue on with their state, state license. Um, but we have been presented with at least one form. So in order for uh, the city clerk to sign it, he would need the authority of council to affirmatively state that as of today's date, they are going to opt in this is what you're saying by passing this resolution you are going to opt in and you are going to at least permit three provisioning centers it does not by passing this resolution mean that you're only going to allow three provisioning centers and nothing else it just means that at a minimum we are going to allow the three that are currently existing um, we do have to pass an ordinance uh, I believe by June 15th uh, in the city so between now and June 15th we need to take up the larger issue of whether we're going to allow anything beyond the three provisioning centers but by this vote today we're just stating that yes we're going to opt in for the purpose of at least allowing the three that have been approved thus far subject to the requirements of our local ordinance which is forthcoming okay. I have yes. a question on that yes. so can I ask a question of the attorney um, so let's say one of the three that we um they they because they have to go through the licensing they have to go through the state let's say for whatever reason one or more of the um now approved um license are not approved are we saying um that we can then offer that third spot or that whatever to someone else or is it they are just grandfathered in and at this point until we have a more expansive ordinance that if one drops out we now just have two the way the resolution is written is, is saying that you're going to pass an ordinance that opts in for at least three so if we're one if one were unable to obtain proper state licensing there would be a vacancy at that point so my concern is this <clears throat> with that is that I know what we're looking at without going into it in the what we have discussed in the ordinance generally there is nothing in this in this resolution that speaks to as how that third or or if one drops out how that would be chosen and that would be terms that would be contained in our permanent ordinance that we right. passed between now and June 15th we can address issues such as how much time we're going to allow uh, for existing dispensaries or provisioning centers to obtain their state license before at that point losing local approval like right. in other words we're not we don't necessarily have to keep um, their ability to comply with the state open indefinitely they're gonna have to timely obtain a state license and we can address those requirements in a future ordinance and maybe could I add something too mm -hmm. is that we the this resolution is for uh, not specific 
it's for specific locations it's not for specific operators and that maybe maybe will help clarify that we have identified three locations that meet the 2012 ordinance that mm -hmm. was passed and so that is is where the the um, I guess the ordinance that we have um, part of the attestation that we're stating is that the three that were located did comply with the prior ordinance also I'm going to support this I just you know, as as is evidenced by my my I just have concern deep concern as far as going forward if one or more do not pass the state muster so to speak how are we going to choose and it says nowhere in this resolution how we are going to choose who's going to fill in those vacancies and that'll be addressed in our, our permanent ordinance I don't think it needs to be addressed here and let me Fair tell enough. you why you're the attorney because this is doesn't say that we're going to permanently allow them to operate this just says we're going to give them the form to complete the next step in the state process Fair enough. that's all it says so in the event they don't comply with the state process then obviously they're not gonna have a license they can't continue operating um, but if ultimately we have already discussed and we have a general idea of of these types of issues and how they're going to be addressed in the ordinance subject to council approval um, so I think I think it'll be fairly addressed in the new yeah, ordinance I, I coming agree. And, and I agree, picking how people receive a license is certainly an important topic that, that we've Absolutely. talked about on, on quite a few occasions. So I do want to also point out to council and anybody in the audience present that uh, anybody who does not turn in this attestation form to the state by February 15th will be in violation, they will be operating illegally <coughs> at that point if they're not complying with this process. Um, not, nece not necessarily my hope is that the state will enforce the fact that people are operating after February 15th without having completed the proper step that's yet to be seen but that is a hard deadline for people who are currently operating in order to maintain compliance with state law okay will we get notification from the state if they turn in this form well we'll know whether we signed it yeah oh that's right. yeah and we'll have copies of it yeah okay. mayor o, yes may I ask the mayor other the attorney something yes. here mm -hmm. okay if we go ahead and move on this my concern is that uh, we have not completed or evolved a whole uh, marijuana ordinance for our city okay if we apply future uh, provisions in that ordinance that were as may would if those where they are located now would be in conflict of it but because of this they will be grandfathered in those locations those properties okay Will the future ones be able to challenge the city on those locations, one? Number two, if not one or any of them are not approved by the state in those properties, they would then come under our new provision of ordinance. Do you understand what I'm saying? So my concerns there are some of the things that, well, you would allow these three to do where they are located, okay? And then we create an ordinance that has a little bit more provisions in them. And could we potentially be challenged regarding that because of the first three? I can just tell you that I'm not going to, as the city attorney, recommend an ordinance to you that would zone these three dispensaries out of where they currently are. Uh, our ordinance, as it was written 10 years ago, was very strict in a zoning, pers uh, in a zoning sense in that it had a thousand foot uh, setback requirement from a residential school, uh, church, daycare, um, things of that nature, parks. Um, and it also had a thousand foot concentration requirement, which said that not only do you have to be the thousand feet away from any one of those establishments, but you also can't be within a thousand feet of each other. That is why under our current ordinance, we're capped at the three that we have mm -hmm. and that we've permitted because of that concentration requirement. So. Um, any discussions that we have had and any ordinance that I intend to present to this council will not have stricter requirements in order to zone out any of the three dispensaries. Uh, my intent would be to keep the same or less than, depending on what council chooses to approve. But I would not recommend the approval of anything, nor would I draft anything that would put us in a position where we would zone out one of the three dispensaries that are already uh, approved pursuant to this resolution. Mayor mm -hmm. so let me get, get something straight here if um, by chance we decide that we want to refrain from having any of these growing facilities or 
uh, any of the marijuana uh, operations on, say, uh, two of the major uh, crossroads in our city, and these are already approved previously under an o original ordinance. You should you should know when you vote today that you our ordinance should continue to allow these three to exist in the location that they're at. Yes, and it's absolutely my recommendation to council. And then th that's fine because we, we made a commitment there. But in the future, additional uh, facilities, if we reframe to choose to uh, prohibit them from off major roads. Madam Mayor, point of order, that's that. not on the display. Right. Okay, I'm just right. wondering right. the liability of what this is. No. The important thing to note about the, the Michigan Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act is they have given complete discretion to cities. Cities can opt out. Cities can opt in. They can opt in for three dispensaries, two grows, one secure transporter, and nothing else. They can opt in just for one facility. So the amount of discretion that the state has granted the municipalities is great. Um, so from a, a legal standpoint of being you know, able to challenge the zoning issues and things like that, I think it's fairly clear that we have a wide latitude of discretion in where we're going to allow them and whether we're going to allow them entirely. Um, so when you ask questions about people being grandfathered in um, and then whether a new person is going to challenge that issue, uh, we have wide discretion in that regard. That's the answer I want to hear. I can't promise no one's going to sue the city because people sue the city just for not valid reasons all the time, but I think I think the state <coughs> law is written in such a way that wide discretion is afforded to municipalities, and I'm comfortable with that. Okay. okay. All right. All right. It's been moved by Councilman Sanders, supported by Councilman Porter, to adopt uh, the resolution. We need discussion, ma'am. I think someone had their hand up, ma'am. But uh, no more council discussion. No. That's what I want to know. No more discussion here from council. I, I, I had one thing. Yes, please. Thank you. I just wanted to say I've talked to different people. I, I said recognize a couple of the people that own dispensaries in our town, and I have heard nothing negative about any of what they've been doing, and everything that I've heard so far has been positive, and they've been actually really um, contributing to the community and doing a really good job. So that's what that's basically what I've heard so far. Thanks, okay. ma'am. Yes. I agree Are you that. speaking up to this resolution? Yeah. Okay. Please come up to the microphone. You're required to. Um, Address the council and let us know your name and state the street you live on. Jimmy Parker. What's that address? Uh, four, four, eight, four, three, two, eight, zero. What's that address? You just asked for the street. The street. Oh, Edmund. 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 I'm sorry. We just moved. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. But I do agree. My wife, she had two back surgeries. And she got a marigold water card. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad she goes to the same one. And she says the people is really nice. She loves going there. Mm -hmm. And I would just, it's close to our house. And I would just hate to see it move. Well, but we are, we are not moving them. It is up to them now to do what they need to do at the state. If they don't do what they need to do with the state, oh, it's uh, up to them. We are not shutting anybody down. Oh, it is up to those three that are operate the two that are operating to get the forms into the state and follow the state law. All right. Okay. If they don't follow the law, yep. it's All out right. of our hands. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have to come up to the microphone. Good afternoon, Mohammed Bezi, attorney for Holistic Health, one of the dispensaries, provisioning centers that is uh, already operating in yes. the city. I just wanted to add to what uh, Ms. O'Leary was actually stating about the emergency rules and temporary uh, operation of the dispensary, just for everybody's uh, uh, clarification. Uh, the requirement to actually submit their application by February 15th, it is a deadline that the emergency rule satisfied, but it's not the emergency rule states actually that it's it could be used a reason by the state licensing board to deny an application if they did not do it. It's not an automatic denial of right. mm -hmm. whatever. Because there are some cities who are, for some logistical reasons, that they're not actually signing the attestation forms. That, in my opinion, could be a reason why a licensing board might still issue a license for that. Well, we're just dealing with the city of I Wayne. I just wanted to clarify yeah. that. But yeah, we're only here worried about the city of Thank Wayne. You. I don't care what other cities are doing. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. There's another gentleman. 
My name is Darren Posey. Um, I live at 5685 Williams. Been a resident in Wayne since 1997. Um, I see that we have a lot of our playgrounds are for sale. They actually have real estate signs on them. I see our DPW looks like it's for sale also. Um, from what I understand, I could be wrong. The state's going to put a 3% gross tax on that's what they're suggesting, whether they do that or not. Then from what I understand, that the hosting city gets 75% of that tax. Am I right? Isn't that what's going to supposedly happening? On what? No. There's not going to be any type of we we do, you know sir this is all new all right. new ground and so the state has not fulfilled their promise to us with revenue sharing i do not foresee well, them holding up their end of the bargain with any money that they say they're going to give us well i don't want to get into the revenue sharing thing because that's a whole other story but uh, my question is so there's isn't there supposed to be a tax put on this medical marijuana eventually and the city that's supposed to host it is supposed to get from what i understand up to 75 percent of that three percent uh, i can look, just to put this to, to rest mm -hmm. i think those are issues that are probably properly addressed when we have a permanent ordinance before council mm -hmm. but to answer your question yes there's going to be a tax sure no it's not going to be 75 percent to the cities and the way the tax is going to be uh, of the three percent that's what they were Three percent tax, seventy-five percent of that. Three. You think the state's going to collect a three percent tax and give seventy-five percent to local municipalities? It's not going to happen. That's but. that's what I. That's stuff I've seen no. written on some no. of the state stuff. That's no. why I was asking. But there is a percentage that's allocated mm -hmm. to cities of the three percent. It's okay. much less than seventy-five. Upon appropriation. And a, please be careful. Yeah. Yep. Thank and you. it's upon appropriation by the state, which requires affirmative acts of the state. And the way that it will be divided up amongst municipalities that have opted in is according to the number of licenses or facilities present in your municipality. So there are five different types of facilities, one of which is a provisioning center. Um, there will be a tally of how many you know, facilities are in each of the cities, and it will be divided up by the number of facilities operating in each particular <laughs> municipality. So how many the, the city chooses to allow beyond the three that we're discussing today it's probably better saved for a later discussion when we actually have our ordinance in front of us. I also have noticed um, from going there and talking to some people while waiting in the room, we have people coming from Toledo. We have people coming from other communities because they can't go nowhere else. Do you be Can you believe that Wayne can actually be some sort of destination at some <laughs> point? Believe it or not, that's amazing. It's And they got more business there then I guarantee you they're putting out more people go through there than the car dealership, guaranteed. Because I don't know about you, I can't afford a $75,000 Ford anymore. Well, let's hope there's frequenting our other businesses on the way. That's what we want <laughs> well, to do. <laughs> Buy something in Wayne. Yes. Yes. Remember, this is we're just discussing this ordinance today. We're not discussing marijuana ordinance in general. This is right. just for today. Right. Three. Uh, Keith Butkovich on 2nd Street. First off, I asked, I hope these resident, these visitors do visit many of our other businesses. Uh, my question is this proposed ordinance and the one that was passed, I guess it was 10 years ago, because I remember that discussion. Does that mean this ordinance is still, the previous ordinance is still in effect with regard to the uh, 1,000 feet yes. and so on and so forth? And there's nothing in that that's changing? Not until conjoined. we pass a new ordinance. Right. Our new ordinance will replace the old ordinance in its entirety. But at this point, if this passes, it's still it's still in, a thousand in feet. Yes, a thousand feet and whatever. I can't remember the rest yes. of the ordinance, but yes. Okay, that's what I need. that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Okay. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item. The next item is item 9E. Uh, can we wait? We'll hold a minute until the people leave. I was writing my notes, Tom. I was trying to write my notes.
Mr. Gochai. Okay. All right. Now that our regulars are back, can we continue? It's item 9E. This is to approve a resolution with Ambach Assurance Corporation for the commutation and defeasance agreement for the refinancing of general obligation bonds. Mr. Colas, let's see. Move approval. Okay. Support. Okay. Yes. Good, Good evening, evening. <laughs> uh, Madam Mayor, uh, members of council. Um, if you remember back in December, um, we authorized, the council authorized the issuance of refunding bonds to refund bonds that were issued back in 2004, 2006, and 2007 for water and supply system improvements in the city. Each of those series of bonds were insured by AMBAC Insur Assurance Company. Um, so to the extent that the city was unable to make payments on debt service payments on those bonds, the bondholders actually would be able to draw on an insurance policy. So in the mid-2000s, the insurance companies went through some turmoil. And so what AMBAC is doing for certain issuers is um, offering incentives to, it, to actually assist in refunding bonds. Now, we were already looking at refunding these particular bond issues to produce interest, interest rate savings uh, or debt service savings to the city. But what AMBAC is offering is, is, a, is a payment to assist in, in furthering the savings associated with refunding the bonds. So the agreement provides for, to the extent that the city continues to the process of issuing the refunding bonds and actually refunds the bonds, they'll provide a payment to the city of $220,000 to assist in the costs associated with actually issuing those bonds. So that dollar amount was negotiated. It happens to be the exact cost to the city of actually issuing the bonds. So that'll produce <coughs> increased savings above the savings that were anticipated by having a lower interest rate in place. So the agreement in front of you, um, the resolution provides for approval of the agreement. The agreement really is, a, in essence, a one-sided agreement. It's all for the benefit of the city um, because if the city doesn't ultimately refund the bonds, it doesn't get the payment from AMBAC because the bonds will still be outstanding and their insurance policies will still insure those prior issues. Um, but to the extent the city proceeds and actually issues the bonds and the plan is to be in the market next week to price and refund the bonds and close by the end of this month of February, um, AMBEC will provide the $220,000 that we'll then put into the escrow along with the bond proceeds to, to take out the prior bond. So that will just, because uh, if that payment wasn't available, we would actually finance that additional $220,000 out of the bonds. But now we can reduce our bond size by that amount and then use the dollars from AMBEC to go into the escrow fund to pay off the prior bonds along with the remaining proceeds. So that's the purpose of the agreement. The agreement has a couple of attachments to it. One is the escrow agreement that we'll actually use with Bank of New York Trust Company where again the bond proceeds and money from AMBEC will go and hold will be held in trust and to be used just to pay the prior bondholders. It has no other it can't be used for any other purpose. Um, and once those monies go into that escrow account, um, the, the bonds, the 2004, 2006, and 2007 bonds are legally defeased, meaning that they're no longer an obligation of the city. And all that's left going forward is the new bonds that we put in place with the lower interest rates. So any questions on the agreement of itself, the, the form of the agreement, or the, the process of refunding the bonds going forward? It's almost sounds too good to be true. <laughs> it's, it's a nice, it's, an, it's a unique opportunity. Um, again, what AMBEC is trying to do is reduce their risk portfolio internally. Um, so they're offering this to a, a handful of communities. Um, and City of Wayne's lucky enough to be one of them. Uh, because it does, it will increase the savings by a couple percent, which should be nice. Okay. Mayor, Mayor yes. Mayor. I'm just thinking um, with the possibility that interest rates may go up eventually here, this probably was an opportune time that we got this out of the way. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, the, the markets are very volatile. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see what impact, if any, we've had with uh, to the bond market with the impact of the stock market. No. Um, so, again, this is a 
this is a time to try to get into the market and lock in those savings now um, because we just don't know what it's going to be you know a month two months three months from now okay madam mayor yes uh, for clarification we make bond payments periodically throughout a year correct correct so semi-annual payments you you make on bonds yep are we targeting a lower payment or a shorter duration for these new bonds so we're just targeting a lower payment the the duration will stay exactly the same as the existing bonds thank you okay. and even though those were these bonds are refinanced bonds basically correct the so the 2000 part of the 2004s and the 2006s still remain outstanding the 2007s mm -hmm. refunded part of the 2004s okay yep all right okay any other questions no? okay it's been moved by councilman sanders supported by councilman gabriel all in favor aye opposed aye. motion carries thank you very much great thank you have a good evening thanks you too next item is item 9f this is to approve the appointment of Linda Gable, the magistrate slash court administrator, as the designated hearing officer for the appeal process of the alarm ordinance as defined in Chapter 802 of the Codified Ordinance of Wayne. Move to approve. Support. It's been moved by Mayor Pro Tem Miller, supported by Councilman Webster. Any question or discussion? Yes, Councilman Sanders. Not that I'm necessarily against this, um, but I do have a question why would these just not go through our normal um, it's an ordinance and it's a violation ordinance why would it just not go through the regular court system the violation itself is not a civil infraction or a misdemeanor citation so it wouldn't naturally automatically go to the court um, we have a hearing officer kind of like we do on dangerous buildings uh, we have a hearing officer that hears those it's an administrative appeals process as opposed to uh, a criminal or a civil process that the court mm -hmm. would normally handle um, the reason I chose just now that you've asked a question I'll speak on it a little bit more the reason I chose uh, Linda Gable is uh, Linda Gable has been trained as a magistrate at the court uh, the standard according to our ordinance on an appeals is uh, a preponderance of the evidence standard which is essentially 50.1 percent uh, Linda is familiar with that legal standard she is also familiar with uh, rules of admissibility uh, you know taking testimony things of that nature she has conducted you know business in the court and it's my understanding that's probably what where we'll use to uh, have these appeals I would note that our year started on January 1 and we already have two people that have hit, have exceeded the warnings that we allowed which at this time I can't remember if it's two or three is it two it's either after two after two so um, and and there are mul they're appealing multiple mm -hmm. it's not just one t one right. fine so these are or were our top two violators from last year uh, again you know it has to go through the process because they've appealed it um, but hopefully this will fix the issue moving forward because that's ultimately our goal thank you maybe part of the process would be to hand out cards to them for people that provide security systems in buildings <laughs> since obviously they can't figure that out for themselves it's my understanding that, that these two uh, the reasoning is, is uh, Sorry. rodents so you get you get raccoons, you get mice, you get things like that in the building. That's the reasoning provided, but obviously we'll get into that at the administrative hearing. I would be conducting the administrating hear, uh, administrative hearing on behalf of the city and presenting witnesses and testimony based on the you know people who respond mm -hmm. to the scene. And obviously they have an opportunity to be heard and a representative to appear if they so choose. Okay, thank you. Madam Mayor. One moment. Any other questions from council? I have. Yes. One. So in the event somebody comes to appeal and and they lose is there anything beyond that or is this the final decision we have two appeals already so when you say in the event we already have two that have been filed and they have to occur within 60 days our ordinance says that an appeal would go to the district court judge so judge Mack okay. would hear an appeal on that matter um, in the event that they disagree with uh, Miss Gable okay. Okay. if I might ask along with that yeah so then after that can they then go further than that they could theoretically so go to the circuit court okay. just want to make sure okay all Thank right you. yes could you please come to the podium I would just one more thing I would also point out that pursuant to our ordinance the administrative hearing officer has the ability to find them responsible and keep all fines in place but we are also vesting the uh, Miss Gable with the ability to all part none some so she can 
do as she sees fit in the sense of reducing fines as well. Okay. So we are granting her with the authority, not just finding responsible, not responsible, zero or all, but she has the ability to fall somewhere in between the zero to whatever they were fined. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Osborne. Good evening. Good evening. Um, as we moved on this uh, ordinance in Chapter 802, there was, that's three meetings ago, as we worked on it, uh, I asked questions about uh, was this apply to regular homeowners and uh, not just businesses that you get the alarms. And uh, we worked through it and you said yes, it's, it's defined in the ordinance. Found out that the next meeting. Now, at no time in two types, two times that the assistant chief, who's now left us, gone on to uh, another job, was it addressed that this um, ordinance, as it was read, mm -hmm. that said it would be held by a, a magistrate or a court administrator. It was listed as it's a violation. Okay, we have our famous word in, in Wayne is blight control. So if your grass is high, you get a coupon and ticket, supposedly, after they do a nice job. You don't take care of your sidewalks and remove the snow, you get a coupon. Welcome to Wayne. You don't, your unsightly trash cans are out there, you get a coupon. So these people that leave their trash, their coupons, and got a lot of coupons, they have the privilege to see the judge. And I just don't understand why you couldn't have explained that when you decided to make this ordinance that you were going to single out this one ordinance to have a magistrate take care of it. I think building alarms, fire alarms, are very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that you should act on them right away. But what is more important, the blight of the snow, the garbage cans, or the alarm? You don't know. I think the people have the privilege. They get to see the judge. Why is it only this, this ordinance that applies to there. If we want to save money, if she's saving you money and you don't want to see Judge Laura Mack, then fine. Let's revert a, a punitive thing for unsightly garbage cans out in front of your neighborhood or tall grass. Let, them, let us start changing our ordinance and give them all to Linda because she knows how to take care of it. Okay? So that's. I, I wish you would have mentioned this when you first had the ordinance and your time is up. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. The next item is item 10, administration reports. Are there any reports, city manager? Yes, I had a request from the uh, one uh, council member to move quickly, so I will. Um, <laughs> Uh, just really quick, Nancy um, could not be here, senior director, tonight. As you know, she's had some issues with her leg, and, and um, I didn't want her to come out into the snow. So I'm going to just read a couple things going on. Tomorrow, February 7th, at 1 o'clock at um, Hype Recreation Center, um, there is a free legal presentation um, for residents 60 years and older. Um, it starts at, at uh, 1 o'clock, and Nancy has asked that you sign in by 12.30 if you're interested. So you can talk about guardianship, conservatorship, uh, wills, trusts, power of attorney, nursing homes, etc. So I um, encourage anyone who needs some uh, legal assistance to take advantage of this if you're over 60. Um, Beaumont Health, uh, as you know, has been partnering with the city on a lot of wonderful programs with regards to um, you know, healthy lifestyles. And there's going to be free, a free upcoming workshop, and I'll have all this information up here at the Hype Center um, from Wednesdays from 6 to 8.30, February 7th through March 14th. 
and basically they're just going to talk to you about type 2 diabetes and um, how to avoid complications, uh, healthy cooking, things like that. So um, this is for anybody and um, you know even if you don't have diabetes it's probably a good idea to uh, take precautionary measures and learn how to prevent it. So this is a great option for, for everyone and it's at night. So. And then um, there's another one, February 21st, Meadowbrook Theater. I have some information about Rosemary Clooney Musical. Um, so if you're interested, it's $95. Um, there is a sign-up sheet up here if you, if you want a copy. And then um, Tai Chi classes are taking place. Um, they are coming up. They are Tuesday's 10-week uh, session and uh, $65 per session. So I know they're a little costly, but if, uh, you know, anything to, uh, Nancy tries to find any programs to promote health um, throughout the city, and um, I really appreciate the um, work we've been doing with Beaumont Health, and I know some of our council members have been involved in uh, those meetings as well. Mayor, I didn't give you this luxury tonight because it takes away from your three minutes, so. I uh, know you want to have your time. So um, there were a couple questions at the January 16th meeting. Um, one was, why are we selling the parks? You know, this wasn't an easy option for us. Uh, the city has 19, well, 17 parks and, and two trail systems. And we can't keep up with all of it right now. Um, our, our, our staff has shrunk tremendously. Our DPW is already working on, you know, 40, uh, you know, 30 to 40 water main breaks. And I mean, the snow, I mean, we've been, we've been pummeled. We just don't have, you know, even in the summertime, we just don't have the ability because these, you know, even the water main breaks happen at that point. They have tree trimming to do. There's a lot of things that the DPW would love to do for everybody, but we just don't have the staffing. And you know, bottom line, and it's no secret, the city has a revenue issue. We don't have an expenditure problem. We've cut to the bone. We've cut to the core. We have a revenue issue. We have to look at all options. The two parks, JC and Kiwanis, that um, have sale signs in front of them, uh, the state helped us look through the deeds, and those were the two parks that actually had the, the uh, space, and uh, Kiwanis Park actually has infrastructure running underneath it, water and sewer. So this would be a good opportunity to um, look at some new housing opportunities and some new taxes. It's, again, it's not an easy decision, but we have to look at new revenue options if we're going to keep the city government running, if you're going to keep police officers on the street, and public safety intact. I mean, these are the hard choices we have to make. Um, there was a question about Michigan Avenue road issues. The DPW has been in contact with the Michigan Department of Transportation about the poor conditions on Michigan Avenue, including the potholes, collapsing curbs, et cetera, that were brought up at the last meeting. As you can imagine, um, I did post, and, and there is a flyer. Please take the flyer out in the vestibule. There are county roads in this city. They are listed on there. There are county roads that you can always call our DPW department. They're happy to report it, but you know you can make the call too, and there is a number that you can call for, for county roads as well. And Michigan Avenue is MDOT, but we're more than happy to make that call for you if it's easier for you to speak to one of our um, our departments about it. And um, you know they're very open to to doing the reports. Now please understand understand they it doesn't fall upon deaf ears the problem is is that there's so many potholes being reported right now that Wayne is not the only city that uh, has issues um, I know that somebody contacted me today about some they said their car was gonna fall into one <laughs> I get that um, but we do report them we do and, and we do get the answer back we're doing the best that we can everybody's roads are bad right now but please continue to report them to Wayne County, to DPW, call MDOT, whatever you need to do to help us out. But we're, we're here to help you as well, and, and we're not ignoring your, your requests. Cadillac Apartments, what's the status of Cadillac Apartments? That's a great question. Um, the Building and Engineering Department has stated the property owners have done the bare minimum to, bare minimum to secure this site. It's been a problem forever. We recognize it. I, I assure you we recognize it. We don't like the way it looks either. So right now I cannot elaborate on the options we're looking at in an open meeting, but we are looking at some dress, uh, some major um, um, options to to uh, for that property so that we can hopefully either see some development, some demolition, or something that will improve it because nobody wants to look at that anymore. I agree with you. The cloudy water, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you had asked about the cloudy water. Um, I did ask Ed, and he's here if, if you want to talk to him after the meeting a little bit more, but he, you had asked if it was related to main breaks, and Ed said no. He said basically what happens is when temperatures drop, it's common to have air collect in the pipes, which creates a cloudy appearance, but it is safe to drink. That accurate, Ed? That is. Okay. So um, that would conclude my report for this evening. Thank you for your patience, and I hope I moved quick enough. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Please come to I the podium. I didn't breathe. Thank you, Mayor. Um, several meetings ago, 
I asked um, the question about what is the legal definition of lawful order, and that question has yet to been be answered. So I am respectfully requesting you to direct the city attorney to answer that question tonight. I think this falls under the administration report since that is an administrative uh, office. And um, as the city manager mentioned about the parks, I too don't like to see the parks sold, but if we're fortunate enough to have a developer to come in because several years ago when they tore down Monroe schools, that those homes were supposed to be independently assessed, but somehow or another, I guess when Wayne County was doing the assessment, they got tied into the homes around in the area. So if we are fortunate to sell those parks and have a developer come in, we need to direct maybe to assess the uh, Wayne, Count or Wayne County appraisal that we've contracted to do the assessment with to have those areas independently assessed so like if it's in my neighborhood because my home was built in 1943 my home's not going to be assessed at you know a home that probably you know I don't know just throw it out there say like $250,000 it's not going to raise my taxes because there's no way I could sell my home which was built in 1943 for the same amount as a developer were developer would with a new home in that area okay. so again i'm asking you to direct the city attorney to answer my question about what is the legal definition of lawful order thank you okay thank you <coughs> city attorney do you wish to answer that question no, or do you want to put no. it in writing no i don't want to put it in writing okay. either because the reason i'm not answering the question one is any questions like that should come through the chair okay. to date every time he's asked the question it has not come through the chair I pursuant to charter work at the direction of council okay. when council has a question that they themselves want answered I can answer that question even if council wanted me to answer that question it's not a proper legal question and in no way is it related to any matters that the city is taking up right now okay thank you okay and we will move on yes I'll make it is quick. this uh, we're coming to the citizens comment section oh I was just going to comment on what the city manager okay. assessed on her report okay okay after when we get no to problem. the city okay okay I thought we were in no yeah no we are administrative reports mm -hmm. oh okay all right um, well the next item are citizens comments or requests on items not on the agenda citizens are to limit their comments or requests to three minutes the city council asks that if you do have a question or concern to bring it to the attention of the appropriate departments whenever possible if you feel that the matter has not been resolved satisfactorily you are encouraged to bring it to the attention of the city manager and if still not resolved satisfactorily to the mayor and the city council the mayor the city council and the department heads may not respond to questions at the meeting but will respond by the next city council meeting or as soon as possible once they have looked into the matter okay all right we're opening it up to the citizens yes mr gochay thank you madam mayor mm -hmm. council city manager city attorney i just wanted to uh, commend the dpw i mean uh the miracle workers that these uh, men and women are in wayne for the budget that they have to work with and the amount of people they have that they're doing the work with the equipment that we have i'm impressed and it just amazes me after hearing more of what you see on the report that i swear to you every time i drive in on a snowy day or if anybody else is out in another community coming back into wayne or leaving wayne nobody's streets compare to ours bar none not from the main and on our city streets so kudos to them and kudos to you Thank you, Mr. Gochai. Mr. Amos. Mayor, City Council. Mm -hmm. My name's Vern Amos. I live on Stellwagen. About five months ago, I brought up a situation that occurs quite frequently in the city, but here right in the last five years, it's affected me personally in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's rental properties that are being rented to individuals and then that individual turns around and rents them out by the room which makes him a boarding house not a single family dwelling and I've asked it to be looked into several times two years ago in Pacific for a house across the street from me 
never got resolved. The people finally ended up moving out because they got to squabble amongst themselves whose, <laughs> whose turn it was to pay the electric bill. <laughs> uh, I have one next door to me now that's been going on for almost six months now. I've talked to Mike Biden, I've talked to the ordinance man, I've talked to Lisa, and the individuals still live there. It's like a sorority house. There's six individuals that come and go in this house at all times, day and night. I'd like the issue resolved. It's a single family dwelling, mm -hmm. not a condominium. Thank you. Um, Mr. Amos, b b when the meeting ends, Mr. Amos, when the meeting ends, could you please give that address to the city manager again? I have it. You have it? Okay. And could you please provide us with a report and your weekly report to us? Sure. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, Mike McDermott, 652 Forest Street. Um, just want to say a few things. I think it's a sad day for the city of Wayne and for cities all across Michigan when the parks and parks and recreation in general are being sold off like an auctioneer's block. Um, the state has absconded from revenue sharing for the better part of a decade plus. And um, I think that, you know, week after week, council meeting after council meeting, we see residents come up here and can talk about city services and talk about what we don't have in the city of Wayne, what we don't have over in Westland. And uh, we really need to put the pressure on our state legislature and our governor, uh, writing, calling, emailing, and voting um, to make sure that revenue sharing is a priority going into the uh, 2018 election because it's a disgrace what's happened to our communities and especially the city of Wayne which has lost millions from the state of Michigan which has had to sell off its recreation center, which has had to cut its city workforce more than in half and to to even maintain the city services that we we do have um you know we're hanging on by the skin and i think it's i think it's a disgrace now that we're selling off parks like it's an, an auctioneer's block here and um you know jc park is right by where my family lives over on clinton street it and um you know it's a park that when i was a kid and i'd go see my grandpa and my uh, my grandmother that we would go to all the time they would take us up to and it's it's really sad to see that you know it's getting the chopping block and same with Kiwanis Park as well. Um, so I think it's it's really a disgrace and we have to put pressure on our state government um, at all levels, the legislature and the governor, to make sure that revenue sharing is a priority for 2018 and beyond. Um, I also wanted to say uh, thank you for adopting the marijuana resolution. I think especially with the upcoming um, ballot initiative for the uh, treating marijuana like alcohol, I think this is important for the city to really take the initiative in here and you know get ahead of it and hopefully you know maybe we can become a, a niche city where we do get some business and attract some revenue into the city on this specific issue so thank you thank you yes good evening mayor um, good evening I would like to respectfully request to the mayor to, and council if you would um, doesn't have to be this meeting to have the city attorney answer the question about what is the legal definition of lawful order I'm coming through the chair for that another thing I don't know who would handle this but um, our, our tenant who is occupying our community center um, has not been plowing the snow it is in the lease agreement that Hype Athletics signed with us to have the snow plow. And there is always a black pickup parked in the fire lane, which is against the law, because as we all know, the law is the law is the law. And I also want to say, to remind people, <coughs> pursuant to the Michigan Open Meetings Act, section 15263, section three, subsection four, you do not have to give your name or an address in order to speak at an Open Meetings Act. And I want to say this. When Thomas Jefferson crafted the, the Declaration of Independence, he pointed to certain unalienable rights with, with which we were endowed by our Creator. What did he mean when he wrote the phrase unalienable rights? And what rights are unalienable? Jefferson understood unalienable rights as fixed rights given to us by our creator rather than by government 
the emphasis on our Creator is crucial because it shows that the rights are permanent just as the Creator is permanent. Jefferson's thought on the source of these rights was impacted by Oxford's William Blackstone who described unalienable rights as absolute rights, showing that they were absolute because they came from him who is absolute and that they were, are, and always will be because the giver of those rights, Jefferson's creator, was, is, and always will be. Moreover, because we are endowed with them, the rights are inseparable from us. They are part of our humanity. In a word, the government did not give them and therefore cannot take them away, but the government still strains at ways to suppress them. To protect, to protect fundamental individual rights, James Madison helped include the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. The intent was to remove them from government's reach. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yep. Hello, how y'all doing? Um, I'm Judy Pullins. I live at Newberry Square Apartments. I just wanted to thank whoever it was that got that mess finally cleaned up in front of the house. You know, next to the tattoo parlor, what used to be. Mm -hmm. Everybody appreciates it, <laughs> especially me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see you without your boot. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Borgi. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, for those that may not uh, be aware of this, uh, Friday there was a case number 18-001101-CZ in the Circuit Court for the County of Wayne. Robert Borgi was a plaintiff, first County of Wayne, a municipal corporation, and Kathy M. Garrett in her official capacity as Wayne County Clerk as the defendants. There was an order granting plaintiff's motion for preliminary order. At a session of said court held in the city of Detroit, County of Wayne, State of Michigan, on February 2nd, 2018, President Honorable jo Robert J. Colombo, Jr., Judge of the Wayne County Circuit Court. This matter having come before the court on plaintiff's emergency motion for preliminary injunction in order to show cause. The parties have submitted briefs and the court having heard argument and being fully advised, it is hereby ordered that the emergency motion for preliminary injunction in order to show cause is granted for reasons stated orally on the record. It is further ordered that by 4 p.m. on February 2nd, 2018, Wayne County Clerk shall issue a call for a special election for the recall petition submitted by, <coughs> excuse me, by Robert Porgy to recall City of Wayne Councilman Christopher Sanders. This is the final order resolving this last pending claim and closing this case. <coughs> uh, unfortunately, in our legal system, there's appeal processes. I've just been informed earlier this afternoon that attorneys for Mr. Sanders have filed an appeal. So the story continues. Anyone else? Kathy? Uh, Kathy Rockwell. Uh, Councilman Sanders last two weeks ago had wanted to have the Night Watch program put on the agenda and it's not on there this week. And I was, well, I had talked to uh, Mr. Miller, our clerk, and he said that it was not on the agenda. I was wondering who took it off and why it's not on there. I can answer that if you don't mind. No, not at all. Okay. Not, you don't want me to? No, I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I didn't know what that meant. Um, was the city manager had asked us to, to take it off the agenda until the city manager. Okay. Um, until a table it until which time we um, got some clarification from our um, um, our insurance writer as well as um, got some more clarification from the state as far as how it was going to be reconciled with the Senate bill and if the government was going to pass before we uh, address the issue because I do have a copy of the bill from uh, our right, we have it. office we yeah. have it and it, it's on uh, well the people the citizens don't have it right and it reads that it did pass in the 
the house. In the house. And it says, a vehicle used as part of a neighborhood watch program may be required with flashing, rotating, or oscillating amber lights if the vehicle is clearly identified as a neighbor watch vehicle and the neighborhood watch program is working in cooperation with the local law enforcement. The lights described in uh, this subdivision shall not be activated when the vehicle is not being used to perform neighborhood watch program duties. And I have talked to Senator Kobach, and he is trying to find the solution or the wording that you would like to see in mm -hmm. the Senate bill. And mm -hmm. he has tried to get a hold of you twice, Mayor Rowe, and I you know. have not returned the call? No, I've returned his call. We're playing phone tag. Okay, because I did talk to them today. Mm -hmm and they said that you hadn't, and they were going to call again and ask you to return it. And uh, I was wondering why you were, are you really, I get, what, what, what was I have stated my reasons that? for it, and I no, no longer wish to state my reasons. I have my reasons, and they're my reasons right now. Once it goes through, if it's passed by the Senate, we'll deal with it at that time. Not a lot time. of citizens to know why you don't. No, I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't think but it's you appropriate. you money to us and everything for gas and coffee and everything, but you just stopped to just don't want to approve it no more, huh? Right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? Wait, um, gentleman in the back had a... I'm going to go over right here from uh, Westland, and uh, it's 2018, and I did come to the meeting today. I was really impressed having a room full of people, you know, concerned citizens, and, you know, I'm always concerned, too. I'm also on the disability concern, and, and I want to get the word out to Kroger, so and I'm a big advocate. It was, not, it was on the news not too long ago how this gentleman had autism. I don't care who they are. Everybody has the right to work. Oh, yeah. People should not be bullied. I don't care if a person has a disability or a person. Everyone should be treated with equally. I'm going to be working on that awareness, and hopefully with you, Lisa, and I'm planning to have in that luncheon. So I'm really a big advocate of our agency, and I also do uh, stigma. Matter of fact, I'm going to be doing one at a conference this year, and also I also did a uh, PowerPoint for the fire department last year in the city of Wayne. I trained uh, three of their shifts. And if I have to reach out to Kroger's, I will. My Disability Concern Board in Westland, I am going to bring it back to them, and we're going to talk about it. And we're going to try to draft a letter to Kroger's. There's a Kroger's here in Wayne. There's a Kroger's in Westland and other cities. I'm going to be reaching out there, and it's very important. It's like I even always tell people. Mental health is another issue here. You know, we have to make a better awareness about it. And then next month is a disability awareness, and I will be back here talking about the greatest things. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Bukovic? <laughs> Thank you. Still Keith Bukovic on 2nd Street. Um, I'm not sure if this can be answered now because of the, apparently there's an appeal process. I was going to ask um, what would be the requirements to run for this recall election, whether you have to actually live in the ward or it is open, it seems to be the language isn't quite clear to me, but now I'm not sure what the process is. And I know there's a, the clock is ticking, so I don't know if there's a way to get an answer on that now or I have to wait. If you would contact the city clerk's office tomorrow during the day between 10 and 4.30. Okay, so 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 the the status is there's no status for sure if there is going to be an election because it is an appeal. So uh, it's just I just I just wish for this form that people would know because if there is a short deadline that that the word would be out there of what's required to do, be a website, I mean, TV, I can et cetera. Really answer that. Yes. I mean, okay. Uh, it's my understanding that a stay was not issued in the matter. So unless the circuit court issues a stay. Uh, we as a city are obligated to comply with that court's order until a higher court has issued an order contrary to what was uh, directed by this particular judge. So at this time, we should proceed uh, according to the most recent order that's been issued because the order has the matter has not been stayed pending appeal. If it were stayed pending appeal, then we would be waiting prior to act. We would have to wait for a decision from the higher court. So uh, Mr. Miller can answer specific questions about qualifications and deadlines during the hours, but at this time we are required to comply with that judge's order 
uh, until a higher court issues an order that tells us otherwise. Okay, so just to clarify then, as of right now, the city is going forward on what needs to be done for that recall election in May? We will comply with the court's order, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Next item. Yes, sir. My name is Robert Webb. Uh, resident city of Wayne over 65 years I live around Stellwagen Street one of the people in the audience here today said something about Ford Motor Company he couldn't afford a $72,000 $72, vehicle well you need to go down to Jack Demmer and get a price from those people because you can get one down there half the price and I know a lot of people are watching this so that's why I mentioned that Thank but you. I'm here tonight to um, give kudos to the Wayne DPW I was over looking at some property at the Glen Glenwood Cemetery and I got to talk to Mr. Ron Ford, his part-time employee over there. And uh, I think he needs a little bit of recognition for the good job that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And that was my main reason to come here tonight. Uh, I also like to say something about the, um, the Wayne Neighborhood Watch program. I'm for that. I don't see any thing that they're doing wrong. I don't know how, what the legal thing is, the, the law or whatever, the Wayne Police Department. I don't know if they're against it or for it, but I don't see uh, any problem with that. I mean, is there a problem with it? I mean, are there, are, is there something that I don't know about it? Or is there something that I could find out or go somewhere to talk to somebody about it? Because I think it's a good program. And I like to see the volunteers. One of the councilmen, I watch this on TV. Mm -hmm. The council meetings on TV. Mm -hmm. And one of the councilmen said that the, the people on the volunteers for the um, neighborhood watch are also the volunteers that come in and help us clean up the city. So it, it's a bunch of good people trying to do a good thing for the city of Wayne. Okay, thank you. And that's about all I want. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay, move the agenda, please. Is item 11 items for the next agenda? Is there anything for the next agenda? No. Okay. Next item. The next item is item 12. This is the consent calendar. There are two items before you. Move that exception. Support, please. Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item. Our comments from the members of the city council. Okay, we will start with uh, John, Councilman Racy. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple things. Uh, the Rotary is on Thursday will complete their dictionary uh, giveaway to the, the third graders in the city of Wayne. Um, a ton of dictionaries went out this year, and uh, the kids are just really love them. I, I've got a chance to go to two of the two of the uh, dictionary programs, and where we passed them out and. Uh, very very well received by our our teachers and our kids and uh, a great great asset to, uh, to the community and they're very appreciative of that and I want to thank the Rotary for that um, also I had a chance to uh, stop in we have a new business that opened I'm not sure how long it's been open but the woodworking business on uh, Glenwood opened mm -hmm. and uh, they're over by Cal signs in that area and uh, they're still getting things up but they have qu quite a few things there and uh, if you get a minute, stop by there and uh, s say hello and see what they got. Um, just want to, uh, the, the lady that was, um, th th uh, that's working there, she was on our Main Street board at one time and, and wanted to um, invest in, they wanted to invest in the community and they didn't want to go anywhere else but Wayne. So I just thought that was pretty positive um, to see uh, the ripple effect of what's happening from that Main Street program and uh, making a, um, we're creating businesses within our community. So thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Councilman Gabriel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just want to echo uh, some of the comments made by residents tonight where DPW deserves a lot of recognition because on um, this last snowfall, I was pleasantly surprised to see my road plowed. Um, and I know I'm a secondary route, so I was pretty pleased to see that we're staying on top of it, especially with this additional snow we're supposed to get this uh, next couple of days. So, again, thank you for the DPW extra hard work. Uh, with that, nothing else. Okay. Uh, Councilman Webster. 
Thank you. Um, so I just want to kind of remind everybody, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, um, for those that have hydrants or drains in front of your houses, if you could just, you know, make a concerted effort to keep them clear, especially with, um, for first responders, you know, if they're out and they need to get to these hydrants, trying to dig them out of snow and ice can, uh, you know, potentially cost somebody their lives or, you know, potential harm. So please just keep them undug. Um, if you can put a marker by them, that would be helpful so they can get to them a little bit quicker. I'm sure they would really appreciate it when they're out and about. Um, and then as far as our police department goes, I want to really give them some kudos for their increased uh, social media presence and um, really getting some good information out there about some of the things they've been doing recently. Uh, some of the stops, um, especially to our chief, he he was very attentive in this this last week and he, he got a very... Uh, bad person off the street so I want to give him kudos for for being so attentive and with that that's all I have for tonight okay. Councilman Sanders um, I also want to congratulate the DPW we have and as, as uh, Mr. Gochai said we probably have the best city services even with the challenging times we have bar none of any city around us <clears throat> um, I also um, wanted to make a clarification um, there was a resident who stated that I appealed the decision of a judge. Um, that is not entirely correct. Wayne County appealed that decision, and because my attorney was a named association on that original case, we had to join. So, true to form, misinformation, and I just wanted to correct that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilman Porter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll echo what everybody else has already said about the DPW, but I'd like to extend it to all city departments. Everybody in the city is, is working extremely hard, doing everything we can to try and right the city. So I thank it, all of the departments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Miller. Thank you, Mayor. Real quick, uh, if the city manager could also post that phone number to report uh, out lighting throughout the city, maybe help us assist in getting that clock running on the ones that are out and also I just want to um, also add that uh, in conjunction in commemorating Black History Month in the city of Wayne uh, the Wayne Library and the Wayne Historical Museum has been on board uh, the Wayne Library has a display there for you to uh, uh, get some learn learn some things about uh, our history and also the Wayne Historical Museum uh, they put up some posts and uh, you know I'm a Samuel and Jane Green were one of our first Amer African American residents in our city. And also, uh, there was um, another couple that lived where Walgreens is currently now that was part of the Underground Railroad for this community. So this community has a lot of history that goes with Black History Month. Um, some of the posts that they had posted had received over 20,000 views. I think that's pretty impressive. So uh, I encourage you to uh, get out. I know the weather's rough, but you know, we're all kind of like, you know, hubbled into our houses because it's so cold, but get out and go to the Wayne Historic Museum. They've got a, a, um, a, um, a um, presentation this Thursday at uh, six, seven o'clock, and it's about amusement parks in the United States. And while you're there, you'll see all the other kinds of really neat historical things that uh, our city does have and with that thank you okay thank you um, I would just like to state that uh, in regards to you often ask uh, what we gain by some of the memberships that we have well because we are members of the Conference of Western Wayne we uh, have received a check I just uh, was notified by the mail of s roughly six thousand four hundred dollars uh, that will be dispersed from the 911 statewide funds. Uh, <coughs> so we will be getting that check. So that's a nice little little bonus. Um, also, i just like to remind everyone, even though there is no snow emergency called, they're saying up to three inches of snow. So please, if you can, keep the cars off the street just to make it easier for the DPW workers to go down and plow the streets. I mean, we don't have to call emergencies. This is just, in my mind, common sense. Keep the cars in your driveways if you possibly can. It just makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, you can be tying up emergency vehicles, uh, school buses, and such. So please do that, and then nobody wants to get that 
heavy slush dumped in your driveway because the guy in next door to you has his car there. Um, and then also, if you have elderly people living next door to you and such, uh, you know, check on them and uh, make sure, you know, help them plow their snow. Um, you know, and young children out there, not, not even children, teenagers out there, uh, it's a quick way to earn some money. Get a snow shovel out of your garage and go out there and do some physical labor, guys. You know, it's not tough. You know, and more, girls. yeah, guys and girls, more kids need to be getting out there and helping their neighbors by doing that type of activities. Um, and that's all. Have a good evening. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. Aye.